Hey everybody, it's Tuesday, February 17th, 2009. Thanks for stopping by. I just watched Jack Doodle upload's uh, video response to my video where he talked about uh, recognizing Israel's right to exist and he uh, displayed his Ilan Pape books, uh, The Ethnic Cleansing of Palestine and A History of Modern Palestine, which uh, I don't know if he said he'd already read them or was planning on reading them, but uh, it's a good, uh, good thing to see. Uh, two great books. Can't recommend them enough. I know he already knows what's going on, or he will know very soon if he reads those books. And I recommend if you want to know what's really going on, read those books, and you'll never have a question about it again. So I wanted to just add my two cents about uh, recognizing Israel's right to exist and I think I've said this many times but I want to kind of bring all these thoughts together in a coherent fashion first of all no state on earth has a right to exist no state on earth has a right to exist states are uh, political entities they're not people. They're not land masses. They are political uh, structures, political regimes. No governmental entity has a right to exist and to exert power over human beings. Human beings have a right to exist. Human beings have a right to uh, overthrow governments which do not act in their best interests. So. It's very important to remember that uh, governments have no rights. They have responsibilities to the people that they govern. This is a very important uh, uh, idea which underlies uh, the founding of our government. Imperfect as it might be and always has been, uh, our government is uh, or, or could be considered progressive in the fact that uh, it does not view states as legitimate. It views people as legitimate and states as uh, servants of the people and it doesn't always live up to this but this is the idea that underlies our thinking. So uh, this one of the things that makes us uniquely American is the fact that we don't believe that states have a right to exist. And if you go down the path of thinking that governmental entities have rights and people do not, you are really throwing away everything that makes you American. So, uh, no, Israel uh, Israel as a governmental entity has no rights. It has no right to exist. It has responsibilities to all the people which it governs, whether they be Israeli or Arab. And believe me, it does govern everyone from the Mediterranean to the Jordan River. It governs them. So it has responsibilities to the uh, Palestinians in the occupied West Bank and in Gaza. It has responsibility to Arab Israelis. It has responsibility to Israeli citizens. Uh, but it does not have rights. Now, it's very important, and, 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 and it goes beyond this too, because the fact that Israel was created through massacres and uh, ethnic cleansing and terrorism which is a you know historical documented fact uh, you know it doesn't make much sense to debate this because you're going to be proven wrong pretty quickly but if you want to debate it to feel free uh, you, you're just displaying the fact that you don't know the history if you do debate it but nevertheless the fact that Israel was created through ethnic cleansing terrorism and massacres means that if you uh, if you propose that Israel has a right to exist, you are, in, in essence, uh, you are uh, advocating these things. You, if you say that Israel has a right to exist, you're saying Israel had a right to ethnic cleanse, to uh, ethnically cleanse, to massacre people for no reason, uh, or for the fact that they were the wrong color. Uh, you're saying that Israel had a right to practice terrorism. So if you say that Israel has a right to exist, in a very real sense you are 
uh, you're abrogating uh, international law, you're, uh, you're advocating terrorism, you're advocating uh, slaughter, you're advocating ethnic cleansing, and it's a very, very immoral stance to say that. Uh, and, you know, this is not the same thing as saying that Jews have a right to exist or that uh, people have a right to live in certain places. You know, that's, uh, I don't think that has ever been questioned, but the right to exercise uh, exclusive political power through a governmental entity is what is being, uh, what is being uh, challenged by people who say Israel has no right to exist. Now, uh, it's very different to say uh, Palestinians recognize Israel's existence than it is to say they recognize Israel's right to exist. There's, those are two very different things, and um, I don't think there's any country on earth that recognizes another country's right to exist, as a matter of fact. Uh, but they recognize that, that countries do exist and that and they are willing to talk to them, you know. Um, uh, this is uh, something unique in history, and really it's just in, in a, a trick and evasion by propagandists and uh, those who wish to deceive, which is, you know, what Israel is built on, deception and propaganda, because, you know, you can't defend its history, so it's necessity that it, you know, that it uh, relies on deception and propaganda. So this idea that, you know, Suddenly, Palestinians must put a stamp of approval on their own, uh, on their own victim victimization. It's something new in history. No kind, no I mean, people have been victimized all through history, but nobody has ever been asked to approve of their own victimization just to uh, just to slow down their own slaughter, not to stop it, but to just to slow it down. Uh, it's it's really an amazing thing that we're watching. And participating in an amazing crime, but uh, you know, even Mexico does not recognize the United States' right to exist or even its existence in its current state. Do you know why? Because we stole half of Mexico, and of course, Mexicans don't approve of that. Of course, the Mexican government is not going to give us a, a pat on the back for taking half of their country, they're never going to do that, but they do recognize that we do exist. And they do talk to us. And that's all we can ever expect them to do. Uh, until we give back half of their country that we stole. So, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is important to understand. This difference between recognizing the existence and the right to exist. No one, no one should recognize Israel's right to exist. Because if you do you are placing a stamp of approval on war crimes, on crimes against humanity, and you are placing yourself in the company of some really, really bad people, if you do that. Uh, so, I recommend that you don't recognize Israel's right to exist. Recognize their assistance all you want, but don't put your stamp of approval on what they did. Now. It's also important that we recognize, as Americans, I think, that we, uh, we should criticize Israel and what they do, but we should never pretend that we aren't also guilty of the same things. Uh, we did some really, really horrible things when we created this country, uh, and they, they, they lasted for a long time. And if you traveled through America, a hundred years ago, it would have been very hard for you to find a single person in the whole country who didn't agree with what we did to the Native Americans, who didn't think that it was perfectly fine for us to push westward and to dispossess Mexicans and everyone else in the world to create our perfect state. Uh, you know, there are people in Israel, actually, who oppose what Israel is doing, which I think is actually remarkable. Uh, it does show that that uh, human uh, human beings are becoming a little bit more civilized as time goes on, and of course those people are an extreme minority, so it shows we have a long way to go. But nevertheless, uh, we have to keep trying. Thanks for watching.